What's up, Dragon Brood? So today we're going to take a little bit of a different conversational path here. That um, We do have the chickens, though you did meet Bakura on a previous video when uh, he kind of came and interrupted the recording. But our poor guy was actually pretty sick uh, about, I guess it's been, it was before Christmas. I mean, about a month and a half ago or so now. And unfortunately, we had to take him to the vet. And I think one of the things people haven't considered is just how different the vet experience is right now during a pandemic. You know, we actually had to, we didn't even actually get to go in and we had, well, one, we had to go to the emergency vet clinic. Actually, he was sick. He was whiny. He was in pain. And it was like, I don't know, two in the morning. <laughs> like it was, it was crazy. Like we actually, I don't think we, after this whole process was done, we didn't even get home and go to sleep until something like 4.30 in the morning, five, something. It was, it was pretty ridiculous. But when we got there, like, we didn't even get to meet the vet. I mean, we kind of talked to them on the phone. You you pull up outside. They have number parking spots now. So they can address everybody. By the way, I have the cat cam on because he just loves attention. So I'm over here just giving him brushes and pets. And he thinks that's the greatest thing ever. I also have treats for him. So uh, that'll happen during the video. But the interesting thing is, you know, we pull up. They come out, they have a checklist of things that they can ask you. So one of the things I would say, if you're going to have to take your pet in right now, at least for the next few months while we're still dealing with this, is that we can just have all the information available that you can to make it easier. Like, you know, their age, any issues, whatever. So you can answer it quickly because the quicker, the better, because the process is definitely slowed down. We're in a spot where you they can only handle so much at a time right now right because they're also short staffed in some places uh like all businesses they're also dealing with people who've gotten covid or anything else so that's been a bit of a problem uh and, it, and it's just not the experience you're used to when you go to a vet because you're normally like okay well I'm, i'll meet somebody we'll talk to them about personal things and kind of different behavior and you kind of have to get it all out there as quick as you can in the open so anything you think that could be important i would recommend sharing that you know even our follow-ups were tough uh he had a situation or one <laughs> he had to wear his cone of shame he was not happy uh, they had to go through an operating procedure we had to do a lot of phone calls because like every time something came up or they wanted to test something or wanted to pay for a thing it was just like constant 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 you know but that's just the way it's done right now because we can't do anything face to face uh and he obviously hates whenever I stop. Here we go. <laughs> no, wrong one. Got to do this. <laughs> but you got to touch your nose to it. <laughs> no, there you go. All right. So, and the thing is, everybody's kind of put in this weird situation, right? So the vet experience isn't nearly as personal as it should be these days. And... There's not a lot you can do about it. I think that's the real part about all this. Is there's really not a a thing that we can do that's significantly better or different. They're trying to protect everyone. And it's hard because, like I said, we, we went through the whole thing. He went through the operation. We couldn't pick him up for like another day even afterwards. Even when we got him, it was just like they just we gave him the carrier. They put him in the carrier, brought him back out, right? Like we, I didn't speak to a single person <laughs> My wife didn't speak to anybody who would actually like operate him. Not face to face anyway. We talked to him on the phone. And then they gave him, you know, medicine, whatever. And then we had a follow up problem because he basically had a, uh, can't remember the name, but basically he had a lump under his, his skin where like there was some buildup after the surgery and ended up bursting. So that was a separate thing. And then, you know, they were really packed and busy. So we had to call another vet. And it was just not a pleasant time, you know. So. If there's anything I can pass on during all this is definitely be as prepared as you can when going to see the the vet these days. Like at least for the next couple months, right? While everybody's trying to get resituated post-COVID, I would say. Because it's, it's, it's a weird time. Like it's not what you're used to at all. It is completely different than any other time in history I can think of. Like I know they talk about bedside manner and this thing and you know caring about the pets and i don't think it's that the vets don't care i just think we're just put in a really ugly situation and it sucks because you you do want attention like you're bringing your animal in when you're stressed out or your animal your pet is stressed out 
or in pain in our case. I mean, we thought, honestly, maybe this is it, right? Like, maybe he's getting close to, to something major that's going to put him down, right? I don't know. Uh, but he looks like he's good to go. Obviously, he's bothering me to be petted, and he likes his snacks, and everything else is going on. So <laughs> he's looking to see if I have any more snacks or the brush, and I have neither right now, so he's not happy with me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just wanted to throw that out there and just say, like, hey, you know, if you do have to take your pet to the vet right now, take everything you can with you, have every single thing. I would even say, you know, the previous 24 hours or 48 hours, be able to describe their behavior, the things they ate, you know, when when their behavior started to be different, whatever it is that you can do to help the vet, because you're not going to have that time to have those close conversations where the vet can jog your memory or ask you those things. It's just kind of like, if it's not on the checklist, they're not, they're not going to ask because, you know, whether the assistant or whatever comes out, like that, that's all we got, you know, and if we weren't able to fill it in, maybe something came up that we're like, oh, hey, maybe we need to call him back and do this, tell him this. Or when they called and ask a thing, we'd be like, oh, well, normally, you know, he eats this and it's usually fine or whatever. So I would just keep that in mind, you know, moving forward, you know, but otherwise, yeah, he's, he's in good health. He's doing great. Uh, he came and bothered me in the shower this morning. So <laughs> I know some people who follow my gaming channel were concerned uh, because he looks silly with his cone of shame. And he was obviously miserable and drugged up for like two weeks. Uh, but he, he's recovering just fine right now. Uh, but yeah, this this is, he's about, we think we have, he's like 14 now. So good dude. Uh, he likes to sleep and snuggle on my head at night. But uh, I'm just glad he's okay. You know, despite how difficult the process was. Uh, the other thing I'll say is, as for the chickens, uh, we're dealing with some other stuff right now with the chickens. We we do we do have some what appear to be a couple of mice issues, though we believe we've took, taken care of them. Haven't seen them in a couple nights. I'm going to have that on a future video, probably even next week. And to follow up on our uh, hard molt situation, uh, that's coming up as well. So we'll have all of that uh, coming on the channel here in the next two weeks so lots lots of stuff incoming but I just wanted to kind of do this one as more of a public service thing that if you have an issue with your pet and you have to go to a vet right now depending on where you are obviously everybody's area is kind of different right now with all the COVID and everything happening be aware that your experience could be different than normal so be prepared with just every bit of information you can to make those visits very easy and complete because you're not going to have that personal face-to-face -face interaction that you're used to having in an emergency. And it's going to be tough because you're going to be worried and stressed out and everything else. But the more prepared you can be right now, the better the experience and the care for your pet will be. Also, remember, if you haven't, please like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you get notified every single time I have a video up. But that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.